I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Why Jesus went to the cross for you. It's not the reason that you think. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you like our videos, and this dog, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps higher things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation, keeps us a rolling. And if you're watching us on your app, go ahead and hit that like button on the video app. We have one. Check it out. iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Higher Things, Search Lutheran. Check it out today. Lectionary Monday. We didn't get a chance to do it on Monday. So let's take a look at it right now. Specifically, the last verse of the Lectionary Monday reading. High five. Hey. High five. High five. Nothing. Nothing. No high fives. Because you're slipping and sliding, huh? Mm, I'll eat that. All right. What I want to take a look at is, but so that the cosmos would know that I love the Father, and just as the Father commands me, thus I do. Get up, let's go from here. The Lord tells you why he does what he does. And it isn't what you ex expect, and it's ultra comforting if you let it be. He doesn't look inside of you to find something lovable. He doesn't search inside of you for something for worth dying for. He knows you better than that. He knows what's going on in the heart of people, what's going on in your heart. And so what he does and why he does what he does, he says is so that the world would know that he loves his dad. And that, and because he, because his dad commands him, thus he does. So I want you to think about this for just a second. I'm going to toss the dog a treat. Hey, buddy, you want this treat? You want this treat? Whoops, you missed. Jesus does what he does because he wants the world to know that he loves his dad. Jesus does what he does because he, his dad commanded him to do so. And if you think about this for a second, that's what happens right after, let us, let's get up and let's go. He goes to the cross. He is headed to save you. If you think about this, this can be an ending comfort. The world's religion is that God looks down and sees something inside of you lovable, whatever that might be. He sees something inside of you lovable, and then he acts. You make a change, you make a commitment, you do something for God, and God, God could pro quos in return and saves you. That's not what Jesus says. Ooh, it was over his head. Jesus does what his dad commands him to do. Jesus does what he does in order that the world would know that he loves his father. Jesus, chapter two of John's gospel, knows what's going on in men, and he doesn't entrust himself to men, not even you. Paul says this a different way. Paul says, Christ died for the ungodly. Ooh, missed again. Christ died for the ungodly. That's you and me. Before, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. And so he doesn't wait for you to get on board with being his, him being such a savior. He does what his father commands him to do. And his father hates nothing that he created and sends his son. And this is such an ending comfort because it, because salvation and faith and grace and the love of God in Christ Jesus doesn't depend upon you. It rests on the father's love for the son and the son's obedience to his father. This is why earlier in the chapter, Jesus says, the father's greater than I, because he does what his dad commands him to do. This means on the last day, 
You don't have to worry about seeing your sins or wondering whether or not you believed or enough or not, or whether or not you're a good person or not. Be a good person. Commit to Jesus. Stop doing your sins, but those won't save you. That's a fruit of faith. What saves is the Father commanding the Son to die for you. What saves is the Son desires for the world to know that he loves his dad. This is so Old Testament-y. So that the nations will know that I am your God and you are my people. Missed. I am 0 for 10 today. This means on the last day you will stand before God and that glorious throne and there will be the Son of God seated, the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God. And, and you won't have to pole vault over the angel with the flaming sword guarding the door to paradise. You won't have to convince God that you believed enough, committed enough, changed enough to be saved. You simply stand before God and you're like, look, Jesus, you wanted to show the world that you loved your father and that you did everything that you commanded and he commanded you. That's why you went to the cross for me. That's why you saved me. And if there's another reason for me to be saved, you guys need to work it out amongst yourselves between the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. Trinity Sunday's coming because I'm going into a paradise because he died for me because you sent him to die. It's just that simple. Salvation and faith and heaven and eternal life rests on the son's love for his dad and his obedience to his dad. It's just that simple. Well, don't we have to believe the son's work delivered to you by the spirit creates faith wherein when he pleases in those who hear the gospel. The gospel of the father's love for his son and the son's love for his dad and the son's obedience to his dad, even unto death, death on a cross. Oh, it's an ending gospel. When you see it, you won't, there won't be no end to your joy. I'm Pastor George Borkhart, Thor's already gone, and this has been another Higher Things video short.